Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the session. Uh, I thought of uh, discussing in this uh, video uh, how to uh, treat transfer of non-current assets under consolidation, uh, consolidated financial statement. Uh, I have discussed so many uh, topics. So in this uh, particular session, I thought of uh, uh, briefly uh, going through the treatment of uh, transfer of non-current assets. Okay, now uh, transfer of assets from either parent to subsidiary or subsidiary to parent company. Okay, uh, depending on the question, the treatment will uh, vary. Okay, so the, the treatment is different. So uh, let's look at the, uh, the first uh, uh, method, which is uh, transfer of assets from uh, parent company to uh, subsidiary company. So how we can uh, record this transaction and when it comes to uh, group level how you can eliminate these transactions okay now let's take take a, 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 a hypothetical uh, example uh, let's assume that parent company p and subsidiary company as s company so p has acquired 75 percent of the subsidiary company and uh, at the time of uh, acquisition the parent company uh, transferred uh, let's assume uh, 4 million worth of uh, assets the net book value uh, of 4 million worth of assets uh, was transferred to a subsidiary company okay uh, at the time of uh, transfer the, the remaining useful life of the asset let's assume as four years okay uh, now they transfer this 4 million worth of uh, asset net book value uh, to S company uh, for 5 million let's assume 5 million with a profit of 1 million so in consolidation i discuss uh, when we discuss about intercompany transactions elimination elimination of intercompany transactions okay so when you do a consolidation at group level uh, you need to uh, eliminate intercompany transactions okay so when it comes to uh, income statement consolidated income statement you need to eliminate uh, uh, intercompany sales intercompany uh, purchases uh, then you have, let's say, uh, unrealized profit on sale of uh, items, inventories. So these kind of things we discuss. Okay. So we need to eliminate uh, uh, these unrealized profits uh, from the group level. Okay. So now in this case, uh, the parent company has sold a four million worth of assets uh, uh, for five million. So therefore, there is an unrealized profit of uh, one million. This one million has to be uh, removed from uh, the consolidated financial statement at group level. You need to eliminate. Why we need to eliminate? Because it's merely a transfer of asset from uh, one as one company to another company. So uh, as a group, the company has not realized any uh, cash. Company has not realized any cash. There is no value addition to the group. It's merely. You are taking one asset and you are moving to another place okay uh, with an inflated value so therefore there is no uh, value addition to the company so you need to eliminate that inflated profit okay so let's look at uh, two angles now uh, from parent company side and subsidiary company side okay so let's uh, let's uh, see how uh, this standalone financial statement how these transactions going to be recorded okay so when you take parent company parent company had 4 million worth of assets okay uh, they transferred uh, for 5 million okay so therefore the parent company what will do what they will do they will open a disposal account the 4 million asset will be transferred to the uh, uh, what you call the disposal account so it will be debited and since it has been transferred or uh, let's say it's disposed sold to subsidiary company so upon selling uh, you will uh, the parent company will receive cash right so let's say you debited the bank account 5 million and you credit your disposal account 5 million now we have uh, 4 million and 5 million debit 4 million credit 5 million so therefore there is a balance of 1 million on the debit side so this is nothing but it's a profit as far as parent company standalone financial statements are concerned this 1 million will be credited to the income statement of parent company as profit on disposal of assets okay so that is parent company now uh, let's look at the subsidiary company how 
uh, the accountant of subsidiary company would record uh, this particular transaction okay now the accountant of subsidiary company how he would record okay since it's a purchase of assets so what he will do he will debit the asset account and he will credit the bank account okay bank credit uh, and debit the asset account so in the asset account you have 5 million now okay now uh, the subsidiary company accountant would provide depreciation at the end of the period okay every month you have to provide depreciation okay at the end of the period how much you would have provided which is 5 million divided by the remaining useful life which is 4 years okay so you divide 5 million by 4 years that will be 1.25 million okay so when he provides depreciation he would debit the depreciation expense account and he would credit the accumulated depreciation account okay so that is a double entry okay however however uh, if you assume that there is no transaction taken place okay uh, no transaction has taken place okay so the parent company would have recorded the depreciation based on the, the net book value which is 4 million okay on that they would have provided uh, 1 million why 4 million is the asset the remaining useful life is 4 years right so uh, 4 million divided by 4 years will be 1 million they would have provided 1 million whereas since the, uh, the asset value is incremented by 1 million the subsidiary company is providing uh, has provided uh, the depreciation on 5 million so 5 million divided by 4 is 1.25 so therefore there is an over provision of 250,000 here subsidiary provided 1 million 250 if it had not been transferred the, the parent company would have provided 1 million so therefore there is an over provision of 250 as a result of inflated profit so this 250 also will have to be removed at the group level when you do the consolidated financial statements is that clear so now we looked at how the this particular transaction uh, would be recorded uh, from the point of view of parent company and from the point of view of subsidiary company now let's come to the group level the group level i told you all these inflated profit and these uh, over provisions over uh, depreciation will have to be eliminated uh, at the group level okay so when you prepare the uh, what you call consolidated income statement or consolidated financial position you need to eliminate all these uh, what you call transactions okay intercompany transactions first of all we look at the asset when you prepare the consolidated financial position you need to add all the values the parent and the subsidiary line by line method okay so I have done a video on this so just I will put the link below you can watch that particular video uh, in detail I have discussed how you uh, do this uh, line by line uh, consolidation okay so now you take uh, the asset column of a uh, parent company so parent company uh, doesn't have any asset because the asset only asset they had is 4 million that was transferred and subsidiary company uh, they have now 5 million since this 5 million is inflated by 1 million so uh, at the group level this uh, 1 million has to be removed okay how do you remove that asset is a debit balance so if you want to remove this uh, you need to credit the, uh, the, the what you call the asset account okay at group level okay in the uh, elimination column you need to uh, remove uh, from the total asset uh, line you need to uh, remove 1 million okay so uh, when you credit uh, the asset line you need to debit another account where do you debit so debit should be in the financial what you call the income statement uh, where the profit was recognized by the parent company 1 million in the uh, income statement so when you add line by line uh, you have to add all the incomes of parent company and the subsidiary company so in this example only one income which is recognized by parent company 1 million which is uh, what you call unrealized profit okay so therefore uh, in the elimination column you need to uh, remove this 1 million which means removing means you are removing income means you have to debit okay so you are debiting uh, income and you are crediting the asset because you are eliminating the uh, what you call inflated value from the asset uh, account so that is the first entry 
okay so in the uh, group level uh, at group level uh, what is the asset now uh, we had uh, 5 million minus 1 million which is the unrealized profit so you will have at group level 4 million worth of assets and uh, group level at group level on the uh, uh, concentrated financial what you call the income statement uh, since you have removed this 1 million there is no income will be reflected in the uh, group income uh, the concentrated income statement okay now apart from that uh, you have a depreciation expense account in the income statement and accumulated depreciation account in the financial position okay which is uh, 1.2 uh, 1 million 250000 uh, in the depreciation expense account 1 million 250000 in the accumulated depreciation account okay so now we need to eliminate the over provision of uh, as i explained you 250000 so how do you eliminate this 250000 at group level in the elimination column uh, first of all you go to the uh, depreciation expense account since uh, it's a it's a debit balance depreciation expense what you need to do is you need to uh, to eliminate you need to credit right at group level you deduct this 250 you are deducting this from the total depreciation you are crediting the depreciation expense account then when you credit you have to debit somewhere okay so in the elimination uh, column uh, on the accumulated uh, depreciation in the consolidated financial position okay when you do line by line take the parent and uh, subsidiary accumulated depreciation and from the elimination column you remove 250,000 okay so removing means you are debiting the accumulated depreciation account okay so you had a balance of 1 million 250 now you debited 250 okay from the elimination column so uh, the remaining uh, accumulated depreciation is how much it's only 1 million now okay it's only 1 million so uh, and in the depreciation expense account uh, you eliminated 250,000 so therefore at group level you have a depreciation expense uh, amount of 1 million okay now when you take the uh, consolidated financial position what is the net book value of the uh, asset at group level because you had 5 million we removed 1 million now 4 million is the uh, adjusted balance and you had accumulated depreciation of 1 million 250 you removed 250 and now you have a remaining balance of 1 million so 4 million asset 1 million accumulated depreciation which is 3 million is that clear so 3 million so uh, this is exactly the same as uh, assuming that the asset was not transferred okay if you assume that the the transfer has not taken place so uh, transfer has not taken place uh, so how the parent company would have recorded parent uh, company would have recorded the depreciation based on 4 million so 4 million divided by 4 years the remaining useful life in this example which will be 1 million so 4 million minus 1 million will be the net book value of the asset which is 3 million which is exactly same as the group level uh, net book value of 3 million so this is what we did okay we removed all the uh, what do you call uh, all the uh, unrealized profits and uh, uh, over production of depreciation uh, uh, from group level and group level and we recorded the, the net transaction in the group financial statement the financial position and the income statement okay so this is how you record okay so that's it uh, from this video uh, thanks for watching uh, i'll see you soon with another video okay so bye for now